So made it to the third and the most prominent Buddhist complex in Vishakhapatnam by Zach. It is known to a lot of people because it's situated on the main road. The way around here, the path around here is not really treacherous, not really tough to endure through. And hence I've not a, uh, and hence I've not made a video, a snippet of the way, the challenging way. Right now I'm sitting at what you call as the dining hall in this uh, really really big monastery complex. This 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 monastery complex gives me a very wholesome feeling of uh, what do you call of the kind of elements that it is embodying. Like I said, I'm sitting right now at the dining hall, which is called as Upatna Sala. Upatna Sala. So that is what I'm trying to explore. I've started from right bottom, right bottom as in the right, <laughs> the right bottom of the monastery. And uh, yeah, I'm not really doing uh, well. I'm, uh, I don't know what happened. But yeah, I'll, I'll bounce back, sure. So yeah, this is where I am right now. We'll be exploring the entire monastery. And yes, let me take my finger, bloody finger out. So this is the southernmost tip of uh, the Totlakonda Buddhist monastery. Totlakonda's name is derived from uh, Totla means through and uh, Konda means means hill. Two different words, Totla and Konda. And uh, this is a place where there have been a lot of where there are a lot of cisterns that were uh, unearthed. A lot of cisterns which were used for the purpose of uh, what do you call um, accumulating drinking water. And surprisingly. Let us, uh, what do you call, we'll go about uh, understanding how it was discovered. But before that, let's have a quick look at the kind of places we are about to look into. And here, yeah, there's a lot of greenery around. So if you're in Vizak, you wouldn't hesitate in bringing along anyone of your choice to this great, great place. So as I'm moving along this monastery complex, which I really feel is wholesome in Oh, from all the perspectives, it is having a lot of things for us. As we had a look at the dining hall, now let's have a look at the storeroom. The storekeeper's room, I beg your pardon. The storekeeper's room. Towards my right is the storekeeper's room, where I guess the kind of things that will be used in the monastery are kept. Of course, for purposes which primarily revolve around cooking. What is this called? This is called Banda Garika. This is called Banda Garika. I hope I'm doing well with the pronunciation though. And, and this is the other store uh, keeper's room. And this right here is the most fascinating thing that I've not really seen in any of the monastery complexes. Uh, uh, this Kapiya Bhumi, which is known as the kitchen. It's quite a lot of interesting uh, uh, facets of the Buddhist constructions. And yeah, this is how uh, good the location of this is, how well it is made i guess a lot of renovation a lot of uh, what do you call refurbishing a lot of reconstruction has been done as well because the cement and the stones at a few places look a little new maybe the pathways are new there might be a lot of possibilities but the algae around the stones tells an entirely different story this is the view of as far as my eyes could go and yeah, this is incredibly crazy. The kind of construction. I mean, after visiting three Buddhist monasteries, one thing that I'm pretty sure of is Buddhists were amazing architects. Amazing. All of these places that I go to, I realize that they have been made at hilltops, first things first. But yeah, amazing construction abilities. And this is supposed to be a supposed to be an ancient rock path an ancient rock path as they call it and it must be having a board over yeah ancient stone pathway this is apparently an ancient ancient stone pathway something that we came walking from this is pretty much the face of the entire Buddhist campus i can only imagine 1800 years from today when people used to sit here and meditate, mostly Bodhis, 
it would have been a different world altogether. Oh yeah, this is this is uh, pretty much uh, excavations that have been done to procure Satwana coins and different sorts of coins that have been already <coughs> uh, what do you call excavated from this place. This is pretty much how the monastery looks like. The kitchen complex is what we already what we have already been to. Here's the greenery part. This is what is called as a congregation hall. I'm not sure what does that mean. Samavesha Mandiram. Samavesha Mandiram. Sabuvesha. Samavesha Mandiram. I am not sure what this really means. This, this must have been some place where after their meditation or before their meditation all of the people would have interacted among themselves. Yeah, these are the Viharas. I don't really re recall what Viharas were meant for. Viharas were also special places for meditation under the sky. One thing. I have a lot of uh, one thing so I will cover them all up and I will be turning the camera around. So this 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 makes the entire Buddhist complex really really perfect. These uh, stones, these stones add a lot of layer, add a lot of unprecedented perfection. The kind of uh, construction this place beho beholds. What is that? All of these are viharas. All of these. I I can only imagine the number of bodhis that must have uh, resided in this place. Phenomenal, at least a thousand, at least, maybe, um, what do you call, uh, taking a wild guess, but yeah, a lot, many of Bodhis must have surrounded this place, must have resided in this place, apparently, this is beyond perfection, so as we are moving along, we are exploring all of these things are Viharas, as you can see on the boards, all of these things are Viharas, and, uh, uh, one can only imagine the kind of peaceful life you must have lived. These are the modern uh, modern inventions. Because, of course, with the number of products we are consuming, there's a lot of crap that we are generating. Now we are coming on to the more interesting part of the monastery complex. That is, this is the circular Chetya Griha. The circular Chetya Griha, which means Vrutyakara Chetya Grihamo. I'm not really sure what used to be done over here. But yeah. Whatever must have been done here. Must have been crazy. Must have been really satisfying. Chaitigra is uh, what is this place. And as we as we move along with Chaitigra. Let's check around what is on the other side of the monastery. This place is definitely crazy. I'm sticking to the ancient pathway because there's a reason. And this is the Votiv Stupa. The Votiv Stupa which has been protected really well. This is what the Votiv Stupa looks like. Wow. <sighs> such, such, such symbols, such great symbols and these are perfect circles from a little that I infer. How were they so adept at such great examples of architecture back 1800 years ago. I mean, like, wow, man. This is again man made encroachment. Oh, yeah. This is a circle to step on, and we make way. So now that I'm walking through this. What is this? 
This is a burnt up flower like this. These are stones meant for reconstructing the sites that were destroyed because of the rise of Brahmanism. Something that I read along. This is this is the chief monk's cell. Okay, Pradhana Bodhya Bhikshu Gadi. This is the chief monk's cell. This looks something like this. This is really good. After the chief monk cell, we again have a lot of viharas that surround this place. These are what he call as the stupas, if I'm not mistaken. We'll go around there and discover the name. Yeah, like I said, these are all the viharas. There you see the coastline of this incredible city. Okay. This is how it's going so far. Bloody perfect. More than just perfect. This site, this Bodhis complex, man. All the Bodhis complex. All the Buddhist complex are beyond what do you call excellence. There must be some construction going around over here. The building things that must have been destroyed. Because we often see the see these things happening around and yeah now that we are bound to go up this place perfect just perfect I do feel they must keep the ruins intact but yeah everyone's got a choice every government comes with a bottom line now the most exciting part of the Bodhis complex is this. Is this. Where you see all the mountains. All the forests. And the coastline. This place is. Amazing. Just wow man. You can have a look at the sea. Oh. Let's zoom back in and... Oh. Okay. Well, these must be stupas where they used to... The Buddhis, the monks, used to meditate. Yeah, this is the Mahastupa. This one right here. Mahastupa. I think this is something that I would preferably want to read about. These are the Votiv Stupas. Uddeshika Purvaka Stupamalu. Stupamalu. Yeah. And the most exciting part now are... The cisterns, any place that has any sort of water source excites me in ways that I can't describe in English or in any language. So here we have the cisterns, cisterns which were used for storing drinking water perhaps, where they could not, this is not the citadel where uh, during the Harappan civilization uh, they used to take a bath, this is not the citadel, these are cisterns where uh, they used to, Bodhis used to store uh, drinking water. Moving ahead, these are really, really good. And there are steps as well, so this is in fact really well constructed. Let me let me walk my way down as well. Something that I've not seen any travelers so far do. Ah, yeah. This is what the place is like. Having proper drainage system and stuff. But yeah. If a water source is intact at this date, 1800 years down the line, my god. Ah, the best part is, I'm going to explore all of this all alone. Let me see what is written up there. Don't step on any structure. Sure, 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 sure. So now that we move ahead, 
in search of a lot more exemplary places. These are rock cut systems. Oh yeah, the rock cut systems that embody water till this date. Oh yeah. How good is this? How good is this? <sighs> Finding water sources on any given day is really exciting. <sighs> we see a little vegetation sprouting on this. Perhaps is the most clean and most exciting system because yeah, this gives us the remote feeling of uh, being in alignment with the forest and with the sea. Wow. With that we come to an end towards the Buddhist. Oh, there are a few frogs here as well. With that we come towards the end of this exploration. So we are done with exploring the ancient uh, Buddhist monastery complex, Totlakonda. And there are a lot of observations that I make after visiting around the place. First being how uh, incredible the buddhists were at architecture they were brilliant architects as we can see from all the structures that have been created and are intact till this very day the second thing the second and the more important thing is uh, the 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 way totlakonda was discovered back in 1976 or 1980s the indian navy was uh, conducting an air survey to find a piece of land that is suitable to its needs to its needs of warehousing or something else then a navy has lots of needs so it found the ruins up here, the ruins, the things that I've uh, seen just now. They found that why uh, a helicopter ride when they were serving around the space, they found these uh, ruins. And after that, an explosion, an explosion of discoveries followed. Uh, the archaeological survey of India intruded into this area and uh, explored, excavated, did all that it could to revive and to first understand what this area is all about the archaeological survey of india till this day is conducting a lot of research is of course digging deeper into the sources and the history of buddhism but a few things that have been arrived at a few conclusions there is there is a proper demarcation in this buddhist monastery complex something that i'm not sure how it has been arrived at but yeah that's something that i really appreciate secondly in every Buddhist complex, there are these uh, Satvahana coins and there are these ancient currencies that are actively, uh, what do you call, uh, actively dug out, that are actively found. That is again a really, really, really uh, good thing to know about. That Wow, that uh, Archaeological Survey of India is making things public about the kind of things that it's finding. And uh, more importantly, uh, one of the really important observations that I've been making about all the Buddhist monastery complexes is the fact that there is always a water body down below. When I went to Bajanakonda, there was this Sapti river, or I'm not sure of the name. There was a river within, uh, below the Bajanakonda and Lengalakonda complex. That was one thing. Next, the Pavarlakonda complex had the sea right adjacent to it and it was, uh, what do you call it, it was a breathtaking view. It was perfect constant alignment and uh, any person could see that. Thirdly, even today at uh, this Totlakunda, I can see the sea really well and there is this constant sea level at which I'm, uh, what do you call, uh, disco. What do you call this? There are these frogs that are, what do you call, entering the cistern. So there are these 
all all of these uh, buddhist complexes are made at a constant mean sea level that's also another imperative thing to know that wow that because wherever i go i see the coastline from a similar view from a similar uh, trajectory from a similar what do you call angle of viewing angle of incidence so yeah this has been a memorable experience there are if there are any other things that i would uh, have to talk about is the fact that how good a life the buddhis really lived because uh, as we are aware that um, these days people are on the quest of finding reasons to meditate they meditate for purposes that are really frivolous in nature they meditate for attaining dazzling emoluments but when we look at lifestyle of human beings 1800 years ago civilization was on its rise no doubt about that there were a lot of inventions sprouting out there were straits sprouting out but the fact that people didn't get overwhelmed people kept themselves sane during the standstill was the fact that they were really good at meditating that's one really big thing that i've discovered today is the fact that all the people the from the ancient times were really adept at meditating like we look at the saints we look at the yogis we look at all the different people one thing that is common among all of them is that they meditate and so was the case with buddhists these people meditated over here they they found a place they created their solace and they meditated as much as they wanted so that's one key ingredient for great life and i've had a great time over here i wouldn't uh, refuse from uh, remarking how excellent this place is if you're in vizag if you're on a hunt for a really good buddhist place which can offer you some great views proper uh, what do you call uh, proper vibes that yes this is the kind of place that will give you ambience and peace if uh, you're on the hunt for a place that will really uh, fall well in your plans then yeah this is a must must i i am running short of words to exclaim how incredible this place is so yeah let's end it here